Hey everyone, it's Bobby. I have a new project to share with you. This is the Stamperia Province Paper Collection, all in lavenders and purples. And I built an album and a box. This is so pretty. The paper is absolutely gorgeous. I hope you all can see the inside. And then it's got this weathered wood that I put it all around the sides. I've got everything done except the back and all of my inserts simply because I ran out of paper. I had one paper pad that comes with 10 sheets and this is what I have left. This little piddly pile of scraps. So that is not going to do five tags for my inserts. I do have some um, of the cut aparts but not enough. So here's the front of my cover. I left it very plain because I love this paper. It's just beautiful. And I, I poked two holes in the front and the back and just threaded my ribbon through and made a tie that way. Yes. So here's my spine. Is the weathered wood again. And here's the back. And it just has the word lavender that came out of the off the signature sheet actually. And it ties here at the side. And inside the front cover, I have a waterfall that's tied with a ribbon. I have a small tag in here. And then it opens like this. And I just have a one inch strip on each of the pages. So that leaves room for journaling and a photo. And there's three of those and then you have a double space in the back. So that goes in there. And we'll tie this up after a bit. Then I put an envelope in here for her to add more photos. I think I'm going, I might trim this off a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to send this to a family member who has a birthday coming up in May. Her favorite color is purple. And I thought this would re be really, really pretty for her. But she has tons of photos. And I thought this would be a good way for her to save the extras. Then on the first page, I have a acetate sheet that just flips over has a little pocket in it and I have two of the cut aparts in there so you can see them from the front and the back Then we have a double spread here uh, they are this is a three by five so if you cut it down a little bit you could definitely get a photo there and then a smaller one. This is what my tags will be, but I'm going to have to get a hold of Tamara uh, when shipping resumes on Tuesday and get a couple more sheets of the paper to do my tags with. And then I just added a strip of paper on the inside of each of the pockets. On the back side of that, there is a photo mat with a small area for a photo. On the next page, I have a little pocket with a insert, a little um, place to journal. It says place photo here. It goes right back in the pocket. And I use the mini punch board, mini, mini envelope board, to put the notches in here. So this will be another pocket in here, or tag. On this side, we have again another double spread and it's open on both sides so that you can tuck something under it. On page three this lifts up. Oops, I need to put something there but I definitely need more paper. And this one lifts down. I, I can put a magnet on it which is probably what I'll do when I get the paper. On the back side of that will hold a larger photo. It actually needs to be cut down a little bit, I 
think most of them are going to be a 4x5. And then this page, I actually took my X-Acto knife and cut along this lace. And just I just have a couple little cut aparts in there just for the moment. But I'm going to make some more tags for it when I get more paper. Then on the back side of that, we have another one of those little acetate pages with two more of the cut aparts. This paper is absolutely gorgeous. Goes, oops, goes in there. I love this collage paper. Isn't that gorgeous? So there's room for plenty of photos in here. Then on the last page, I have three of the little pockets stacked. These are actually envelopes. I cut the flap off and took the card that goes inside and made a little journaling spot and a photo spot. So there's three of them here. That's one. Here's the second one. They're all alike on the inside. And then here's the third one right here. And on the back side of that page we have two small photo areas and a pocket with a tag. And on the back side, back cover, <coughs> we have a little expandable pocket. And I have a few cut aparts in here. Just a couple for the moment. These are too large to fit on any of my pages. So that is my newest album. I just really love this paper. It is so pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So I'll have to check with Tamara. First of the week, there won't be any shipping Monday because of it being a holiday, but I'll have to check with her. Of course, she's at CHA right now anyway. But I'll check with her first of the week and see if she's got any more. Hopefully she does. So that is my album. I hope you all enjoy it. It was really fun paper to work with. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then it goes back in the little box. And you see there's plenty of room to add photos and memorabilia and whatnot. I could have actually put some flowers in there. Wasn't even thinking about that. But that is my project. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, leave me a comment if you will. I enjoy hearing what everybody thinks about my projects. And I will see you soon in my next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Bobby. <clears throat> I'm on my next project and I thought I would share the process with you. What I have is the Stamperia Province Collection, and I've already cut up the front cover because, as you know, they print on the back side of their cover sheets, and I wanted one of the images on the front, so I've already cut it up. But um, I'll show you the papers here. They're just absolutely gorgeous. I love this weathered wood. Everything is in lavenders and purples, but they only have ten double-sided sheets to a collection. There's actually comes in a paper pad. These are some of the scraps I have left from what I've cut. But I hang on to everything and try to use it all. These are some of the cut aparts. Get rid of those little pieces. And that script. Here's another page of cut aparts. Those beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. I have a granddaughter whose favorite color is purple. Purples and lavenders, so I may hang on to this for her birthday. I don't know. We'll see. And these, these would make really pretty cards because they're actually larger than the album. Isn't this gorgeous? journaling spots on the back. I thought they were so pretty and I love this. Gorgeous, gorgeous. It's got a little bit of teal in it. It's upside down. Dude from 
something Atchison and wife. I can't read it. It's early old script handwriting. And then this whitewashed weathered wood and this. I really wanted to use this on the cover, but I don't. My album's not big enough. It wouldn't tolerate it, but that would make a pretty card, too. So anyway, those are the papers. And then I had in my stash this. You remember the old pencil boxes we used to have to get for school? I had one of those in my stash that I bought at the dollar store. And this is my plan for this. It just closes like this, but I'm going to glue this to it so that it stays open and I can set my album inside. And I cut this lavender paper smaller and took one of the pieces of border. And I'm, I just wrapped it like you would a, a album cover. And I'm going to mount that to here for the front. And I just had it secured with paper clips so it doesn't get lost. Well, they're not paper clips, they're clothespins. I always say paper clips. Sometimes I just don't know what I'm talking about. All right, and then I've covered my album in the Artisan White cardstock. And I'm going to make a different closure on this one. I'm going to run ribbon through these two holes. And I accidentally poked three holes <laughs> in one of the covers. This one's okay. This one actually has three in the outside. <coughs> Excuse me. Once I cover it with paper. This isn't the front piece, but once it's covered, that's not going to show at all. And then I can find the holes from the back and punch it on through. This is the back side of the cover, and this is going to be the front, with this along the top and the lavender. So I cut those out and set them aside so I don't accidentally use them and then get to the end of my project and not have what I need for the cover. So I'm going to set those aside till I get there. Now these are my album pages. And they're going to be pocket pages, but there's not going to be a hinge. These are a seven and a half by four and a half. And each one is scored at a half inch. With the seven and a half at the top, you're going to score it at one half inch. And I've notched three of them. I'm going to have five pages. I've notched three of them and I'll show you how I did that. Because when you put it on the back piece to make the pocket, which is six and seven eighths by five and a half, when you put this on the back side, then you'll have your pocket and I could put a small piece of paper under that notch and then this will attach to the album. But uh, the page is seven inches, but I cut the back side at six and seven eighths just so that it would. I can line it up here without gluing it, just so that it would clear this hinge like that. And then we'll embellish. I've got a bunch of embellishments cut out, but I wanted to show you the basic layout and show you how I notch these pages. So if you want to make this along with me, you can. So let me grab my punch board here. Now I have the one, two, three punch board. I had them the first one that came out and it was I had used it so much and it had gotten so old that when I pushed the button down it would stick and not pop back up so then I ordered this one several years ago uh, online and so far it's been doing really good now on this one I don't know how the other one is marked but on this one the first little number down here is a three and if you line your paper up with that, with that three, and then punch it, turn it over, put it at the three again and punch it. Let me go ahead and do the other one and then we'll finish them together. So there's the three. And again on this side. And then I need my, yes, I'm making a video, my small cutting board. Where did it, oh, there it is. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached.
Okay. Now if you take these and line them up in your cutter, you can feel when it stops. You'll know when you've gone far enough. But I'm going to line it up so I'm just at the bottom of that little curve. But I don't want to get below it. And then you can pick it up and put the cutter right in that little notch and go across to the next one. And you can feel it when it hits that open spot. And that's how you make your notch. So let's do this one. I hope I was in frame on that. Let me see. Yeah, I think you can see. I want to make sure you can see. And it's so hard for me to tell because my my bloom and work area is so small. The other day I made a video and then realized after I posted it that part of it wasn't really in frame. It's so irritating. I hate to do that. Okay, here we go right in that little slot or that notch. And you can it you can feel when it grabs the paper and then when it gets to this part you can feel it let go and you know you're in the right spot. So this one is just a little bit off, but what you can do in that case is just take a little emery board and just slide across it. Dog hair, I guess. See, now it looks fine. So that takes care of that, and this one's the same way. I got a little, a little bit of a notch right there. Emery boards are good for things besides fingernails. Who knew? Okay, so um, I will leave you with that for now. I'm going to cut the rest of my papers for these and get my embellishments all together, or my pockets and flaps and what have you, and then come back and we'll do it together. I can't really do uh, my cutter up here because these are 12 by 12 and my little Fiskars won't cut a 12 by 12 sheet. It's too small. And my big paper cutter takes the whole table and leaves me nowhere to work. So I'll do my cutting off screen and then I'll come back and I will post all the measurements before. Um, when, the, when you see this tutorial, all the measurements will be posted at the same time and you'll be able to follow along with the video. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll get back with you soon and give you the rest of the um, instructions on putting this together. Thanks guys, talk to you soon. Okay everybody, um, I have my album wrapped and the first thing I want to do is the inside front cover. And I cut my papers and I showed you that I punched the holes in the cover like that. Now this third hole will be covered when I get paper on it. And I used the um, Big Bite by We Are Memory Keepers for that. So what I'm going to do is ink my printed papers. I'm not going to ink the cardstock because it's colored all the way through so it doesn't really need it. put a new sponge on that little dauber. And I want to get the inside of the album cover done before I start adding the pages. I do have my papers cut out. So we'll be working on that and covering the box with the decorator papers. have my pieces cut out once I put the background papers down. I'm going to put a little waterfall on this side and a little expandable pouch on the opposite side so I'll show you those. I didn't have those cut out um, when we were talking about the album and I showed you the papers and all of that. So we'll get this put together. And then I'll probably take a break for lunch and come back and we'll do the pages in the box. Let me go ahead and 
beat this while I'm here. I should have eaten these four I got on camera is what I should have done. And I've got one of the cut aparts for the waterfall. Just on the first page. And then I'm gonna just gonna put a one inch strip or a half inch strip on the other pages. Leave room for photos and all of that fun stuff. Where's my there's my little pieces and I've just got um, three pages in the waterfall because this album's not very big. I mean it's going to have several pages and a lot of flaps and things in it. It'll hold a lot of what I call real estate but it won't be larger pieces because the album is only five inches high and it's longer than um, the height is um, seven or the width this way is seven this way is five i'm having trouble getting my thought across here okay there's the waterfall one more piece to ink i need to put a new little spongy on this it's starting to disintegrate and when you're inking it wants to drop little pieces on your card Okay, there's that. Okay, so for the right side, let's get some glue on here and get this down. I love this wood grain that's real, um, I guess, antique -y or weathered is more appropriate. It's got all, all the colors it would have if it was weathered. Okay, and I'm going to put this right up here. Make sure it's close to the score line without going over. I've got my baby wipe. And my scoring. My little spatula. Not that side, it's rough. I got this one at, um, I think, Home Depot. And it's really good on this side, but on this side it's rough. I need to take a emery board or something to it. Let's see how this is, how much space I'm going to have left. Make sure that's going to be right. Yeah, that'd be okay. I don't want a huge space between the pieces, but I don't want them to touch either. I want just a little strip of the white to show through. So if I put down both ends, then I can make sure the center is spaced evenly. Oops, that's not up high enough. There, scoot it up a little bit more. I hope I'm in frame. I didn't even look to see. Sort of. Let me move over a little bit. Okay. Kind of, sort of, right? I'm hoping to have a better lighting situation. There's not much I can do about the space. Not at the moment, not until we're able to move, but... I ordered a new lighting setup today. I talked to Tamar, and I'm going to try what she has. Because I just feel like a lot of times these, um, when I film, my colors just look so washed out. And these are really vibrant colors. I don't want them to look washed out. Okay, so there's that side. And let's put this side down. Sure. 
it straight. And the other one. I think most of you that watch my videos are aware that I have in a Facebook group called Make My Make Mine a Mini. If you don't already uh, subscribe or belong over there, go over and request to become a member. That's just a little bit too long. Let me take a snip off of here. And I do post everything over there as well. And I also, uh, when I have uh, printed instructions for something, I always make sure I get it on Make Mine Mini. So if you're looking for um, measurements or a cut list or anything for one of my project projects, you'll always find it there. I'm going to be crooked. No. I got those a little bit closer than the other one. But it's okay. Because we're going to put more stuff on top of it. And this is just some um, leftover cardstock that I had in my stash. It worked really well with these colors. But I had to try to stretch it as best I could because this Stamperia only comes with 10 sheets so it's not a lot you gotta make the the most of what you've got make sure i've got a white space there we go that's not perfectly straight oops not too much now there we go that's better Now the waterfall is going to go on this side. Oh, let me get my... Punch those holes. Well, I probably better let it... Let the glue dry before I punch it. I'll get that in a minute. I don't want to pull the paper loose. Okay, so the waterfall. I have three... Yeah, there's the three pieces. And they are... Let me see, I have it over here. I haven't printed it out yet, but I type it up as I go along. The, these are four by four and three quarters. And on the four and three quarters side, you're going to score it a half inch on the three. And this piece is four by six and seven eighths. And then I scored at the bottom at one inch or inch and a quarter and an inch and three eighths so it just gave it a little bit of a gusset there so you're going to take these three pieces and we're going to start with the first one along the top edge of this base and you don't want to trim off the corners of these because that help you get it straight Okay, so this is going to match the corner and the corner. And we want to make sure that it lays straight along the side. Okay. So just a teeny bit of a edge there. Okay, next one. Make sure they're scored good. And it's going to butt right up to that first one. Make sure your edges match the side. If you have any overage at all, now's the time to trim it. And I think mine might be just a little bit wider right here. And 
this is a time to trim it and make sure it all looks wonderful. Okay, so there's two of them. And we'll put the third one down. Knowing me, I probably cut it a little crooked. But there's always a way to fix things. like it's okay. I guess I just got a little bit off on that other one. So there's our three. Now this is going to go on the front and it's a little bit smaller than the page so I cut a little banner to go under it. I think it's this one. Just a little strip to fill it in. Yep. Okay. So let's glue this down. Just want a tiny margin at the top and on the sides. It's not quite centered and I want it to be the same. There we go. rest of the pages I'm just going to put a little strip at the bottom and leave this open for photo mats and journaling. So here's one strip for this page. take a sniff off of this one. I think it's a bit, a bit too long. Better. Okay. Now for the inside back. I have a solid photo mat here. on it. Must be time to change my blade on my Fiskars. Okay, so this is going to go in here at the top. I know it takes me a while. I have to make sure I got it straight. It'll drive me crazy later. I'll be thinking about it. When it's time to go to bed tonight, I'll be thinking, ooh, should I change that? I don't go in there. This goes here. Did I have 
me make sure if I hit the polka dot. I'm going to stick with the plain. I know I cut that for in there. I just must have cut it too big. And this goes on the little flap. That's what I did. I measured it too big. So we will trim this off. Let me get a pencil pencil. Where's the pencil? Right there. See, I'll put it where it belongs. Isn't that amazing? So let's trim this off. Make myself a little tick mark. Couldn't see it for a minute. For oh, goodness sakes, I can't get it straight. Here we go. Ink this one in here. Okay, that should work now. Yep, that'd be fine. Okay, I'm just using scraps up to, for this part. I like to um, use as many of the scraps as I can. Sounds like grandson's home. He likes to blare on his horn when he gets home. Don't know why. I guess because he can. And then he makes the dogs all whine. Stop it, Roxy. That's enough. He knows Lucas is outside. He's, he's just whining up a storm. Okay, this is going to be our little pocket down here. And I will put something in here to hold that shut. I was going to do two little brackets, but I don't want them to cover up these colors. They're just so pretty. So it's going to go like that, and it's going to lay right in here, and I want to put a ribbon under it with some tape. I'll use a piece of quarter inch. Actually, with the ribbon, I won't actually have to tie it down, will I? So let's get, this is about, I need to find center ways. This is five. So I'm not good at eyeballing it, guys. So two and a half. Let me move this up so my ruler don't fall off the edge. Two and a half is about, so. I'm just going to run it along here just to anchor my ribbon. And since I'm going to have a ribbon, it won't matter if I have another closure or not. But I did want to put something in that little pocket. I thought it would be pretty. Let's get this off of here. And I want it to be where I can tie the ribbon. down in front like that. So, in my album to center it. It's going to be about... Hush, Roxy. There's no sense in all that noise. Just a minute. Roxy, that's enough. She thinks she's bad. 
Now I'm going to leave this side open and just glue these right. Ro hey. Roxy, get in here and lay down. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Roxy, lay down. She could hear you honking. She about had a fit. Okay, so we're going to glue these three sides and leave this open for an insert. sure the glue sets up good. So that's going to be the little waterfall right there. And these will help hold it down. There's that. Now for the other side. Let me lay this aside. For the back side. Move these cut parts out of the way. I'm going to put a little um, pouch in there. And what I've done is cut this piece four by eight, and I've scored one half, one, and one and a half. Same thing on three sides. This is going to be a little expandable pocket. So we want to cut out the first two all the way out. And get all of the little dimple cut out. Yeah, I call it a dimple where the um, score line makes a little groove. And I like to cut that completely away. And then on this one, we're going to cut out the two bottom ones. And this one will cut up. If you want a tab on yours, cut it this way. If you don't, you can cut this tab out. But I don't like to leave a hole in there. There's that. Let me take those bottom two all the way out. Leave the little tab. It's hard to see the, the score line on this white. Okay. And let me cut it. Oh, I didn't take enough of that dimple out there. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. Now we want to score, or score, we've already scored. We want to fold under on all of these score lines. And then a little tab we do there. This is just going to make a little pocket um, so that you can put extra uh, pictures or cut apart or, you know, whatever you have that you want to put in there. And that tab, I left too much on it. Let me trim that. There. Now the next one is going to fold out. And then 
them back in. Okay. Let's see, we folded it in. Now we're going to go out to the outside edge. Making sure that matches. And then back in again. And the only thing that's going to glue down is going to be this little section here. Okay. So this one goes out. Making sure it's straight. And then back in. side to make a corner. That's the way I like to do them anyway. So let's do that. Make our nice box corner. And then put a clothespin on it. And then I need one more. And then no clothespins here. And then a little bit on this side. Okay. It's hard to get your fingers in there and the clothespin's in the way. And my finger's in the way of the clothespin. Okay, so that's going to be a nice square corner. Hold it down. So maybe I need more glue right there. Oh no, that's not the corner, that's the other piece. I almost glued the wrong thing down. Okay, so I'm going to lay that aside just a second. And then the lid is 3 by 5 I better write that down. It's going to be folded under. It scored it on the long end at 1 half and 1. Okay, my camera quit unexpectedly for some reason. Don't know why. But anyway, I went ahead and glued down the two pieces for the box. I have to correct myself. I did this like I was making a, a normal box with a tab. You don't want the tab on this one because then your expandable side won't have the freedom to move. So cut that tab all the way out. So when you're cutting this out, cut all the way up and all the way over. Let me trim this a little bit. Right. There. So it looks like this. And then I put my papers on the front. You don't have to put them on the back because nobody's going to see that anyway. And then we have our lid. And I have two little pieces for the front. They're just going to go like this. We'll glue those down. We call it a lid, but it's actually a flap. You'll find that from time to time I call things something they aren't, too. Goes along with getting old. You say goofy things sometimes. There's that one. So straight. This one looks to be just a little bit longer. Whoops, sorry about that. Crash. I'm going to take just a smidge off of this one. We want it to be right, you know. Let's see if that, that's better. i put a little ink on this bottom. And I'm using Vintage Photo for all my edges. 
I don't think I mentioned that before. But it's kind of a neutral color that goes along with so many different papers. And it's not overbearing. Okay. There's that piece. Okay, so that is that. Then I have a strip that is uh, four and seven eighths by um, three eighths. Just a tiny little strip to go on the top of this lid. And put it right down the center. <coughs> and this one will go on the underside. And if it's directional like this is with a print, make sure that when you, when you put it down, when you open the lid, it's not upside down. We've all done those things before. I've even put my um, album cover front on the back. Got it turned around when I, when I turned it over. I wasn't thinking, and I had to take it all apart. But we do stuff like that sometimes. Okay, let's bring our album back in. Our cover, anyway. I hadn't taken these clothespins off yet. I'm sure it's set up. And we can tie our ribbon now. Knock everything over, Bobby. Tell you. a hold of it. It's a tiny ribbon. Never fails when you're on camera. It doesn't want to work right. There we go. Don't need the lips to be so big. That's that. Now for this side, this is going to go at the bottom. So taper this bottom just a little bit the way it's hitting. I don't like it. It's going to cause some bulk. I'm just going to take just a tiny bit out. There. And then this goes... And it'll sit right inside this. And that one doesn't look like it folds under right. This score. You'll see when you set it down on the paper if this overhangs at all, you want to rescore it because it should not show from the outside. Get this small scoring tool. Let's see now. That's better. It's hidden like it's supposed to be. Okay. <clears throat> so we want our glue right here. Right here. And right here. Okay. Wood. 
does it ever fail? No, it doesn't. Right. There. And my grandson's outside. Nobody's saying nothing. So I guess it wasn't very important, was it? It's usually telephone solicitors. Okay, there's our little pocket, and you see there's plenty of room in it. And yeah, it's glued down tight. So this little piece will go right over it. And once I get this in, and then I will cut a piece to cover this and go down inside so that this contrast is not obvious because I don't like that. And I think I will taper just a hair off of this. And I like to taper from the score line away from it so that it, because if you cut this way, you're chances of cutting into your score line and running your corner are there. And since I've been known to do silly things like that, I want to avoid it. Okay, so we're going to put this down here like that. Make sure it's straight at the edges. put another little piece in here and that will go there. I wish I'd put a ribbon under it but I didn't. Oh well. Live and learn, huh? I might be able to get one under here. Oh, I think I can. Yay! I didn't let it set up long enough so I can get a ribbon under there. I don't know how that's going to work though. Um, let me think that through. Because I didn't get one down here. And that one's already fastened down tight. Um, that's not going to work. I can't do a ribbon. I'll have to come up with something else. But that's okay. Let's put this down. Should have left it there in the first place, right? I can punch out little circles and use a piece of baker twine. Baker's twine. There's going to be our little folder or pocket. And I can put a border strip or something up here just so we don't have so much plain color. And there are some borders with this kit I can use. I think what I'll do is punch two little circles, put on here, and then um, add some baker's twine and just run a, a figure eight back and forth. I think that'll work okay. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a little bit. It's way past lunch time. So I'm gonna go get a bite of lunch. I'll punch out these circles and show you how I did that and then we'll work on the pages. I have all of the pieces cut out for that and the box and we'll get cranking on this thing. 
All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, let's try to finish up this little pocket. I uh, used this EK Success Circle Punch. I'm not sure how big it is, probably a half inch. Three quarter inch. And I punched three white circles and one colored for each one of the tabs. And I'll put one down here and one up at the top. But I need to put my bottom piece in place. And I did line the inside of this like I told you I would. And I need to get placement on this. And this one's going to have to go right down in here. And I want it to be two and a half. See if I'm about it. Yep, I'm exactly at two and a half. Well, wonders never cease. So let's put this little mat in the pocket so I can poke a hole through the pocket. Make sure I've gone all the way through. I hope that's a big enough hole. I've got these little tiny breads. I have a whole box of different colors. I've had these around for years. And there's purple in there. Lo and behold. So I'm going to get two of those out of there. I don't even remember where I got these. Probably on HSN because when I first started scrapping I always watched all their shows. Okay. So this one is going to go here. I think my hole needs to be a little bit bigger. Get it back in this hole. little bread through there. There it goes, I think. Yep. Ow. Don't stick yourself, Goofy. Barely going to be enough to stick through there. I hate using breads because I always have trouble getting the little prongs separated. Before I put the pocket on. See if I can see in there to get them separated. Here we go. Get my bone folder in there. Smash it over flat. Okay, there's that one. Ugh. He gave me a run for my money. Okay, then this one has to go right in the center. A little bit up from the top. About right there. Looks good to me. So we're going to poke our hole. And we're all the way through. Make this one just a tad bigger. And we'll put this bread through. And I could have used ribbon to tie this shut. I could have used magnets. You know, there's all kinds of things to use, but I wasn't thinking ahead, and that should have been underneath my paper. Oh, what a goof I am sometimes. I need them to separate. It's hard to see. 
end up breaking them off, so what I'll do. There we go. Let them just separate. It won't hurt anything, but I'd rather have it hidden. Okay, so there's those. And I've got some Baker's twine that's purple. You just never know what you might find in my stash, I tell you. A little bit of this, that, and the other. So let's tie our string up under here. Just seems like I've been collecting stuff forever. And I sometimes put it away and forget I got it. And then when you start cleaning up and trying to get better organized, which we all do frequently, then I find things I forgot I had. a little bit. Can we get them loosened up? And I think that ought to be enough. And I'll just trim it off at the bottom. There we go. Whoops. I pulled that a little tight. I shouldn't have pulled it so tight. pulled too much on my lid. There we go. Gonna let it sit up straight. There we go. That's better. Okay, now I'll find a piece of trim or a board or something to put up here. Or I can use a piece of the paper and use a decorative punch like this. Uh, this Martha Stewart punch that I've got that would make a pretty border up here. I may do that. I'll see what um, borders I have left that I haven't already cut everything up. And then we'll get back together shortly and we'll work on the box and the pages. Alright guys, I'll get back with you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, we are ready to put our pages together. I have all five of mine cut, inked, and ready to go. But I just wanted to explain to you what I'm doing. Um, you may very well have a different size box than I have. So, of course, your measurements are going to be different. But here is my box so far. There's the inside. I hope you can see it in the back. And I did the weathered um, wood strips here. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the back because... I'm just about out of paper. I have my pieces um, set aside for the front cover. I have the inside of the covers done, which you already saw those. And now I have to do the pages. And here's here's what I have left. This little pile of scraps, and I still have five inserts to make so I'm going to have to be very frugal with these little pieces and do some piece work. I do have one border strip left and I have some cut aparts but there's only 10 sheets to this paper collection. I've got these little cut aparts that maybe I can use on the tag somehow and make some little strips out of this to make it work. I'm hoping. So anyway that's all I've got left and I'm losing things here. I don't want to lose anything. I can't afford to lose anything because there wasn't that much to start with. But it is a gorgeous paper. Gorgeous. Alright, let me lay all these aside and we'll do one page at a time. This is the front side of page one and as I told you this is your attachment to the spine. There will not be a hinge on this album. So here's all my little pieces. This is a piece of um, clear plastic that I um, 
attached a one inch strip to. I scored it down the middle and attached it just inside this folded edge. Okay, so where's my little strip? I folded another piece and I made a little pocket towards the bottom so that I can put these in there. And that way you can see them from the front and the back. That way I don't have to choose which which side I want to cover. Because they're both so pretty I wanted to keep them both. So it goes like that. And these will go in here. Okay, and here's my two little strips. I have to cover this front side and this back side so that the glue doesn't show. So on the inside, whoops, this piece will go here and this one. I got glue on it with my gluey fingers and this one will go here. Looks like there's a little nub of paper right there. So let's put some glue on this. It's already inked. And it will go down right here, just leaving a little border. piece. This is part of the front cover of the paper pad. But they do, um, they put a print on the back side of their front and back cover so that you can use them both. Which is a really good idea. I don't know if anybody else that does that. So, every little bit helps when you only got ten sheets to start with, right? And that's going to go right there. strips will go right here to cover up the back side of that. edge on there. See, it doesn't look unfinished that way. And then on this side, you have this small piece here. I had to work with a lot of small pieces to make this stretch.
but I think it turned out really pretty. The papers are absolutely gorgeous. And then I cut a piece of the um, cardstock from Tammy's store for my photo mat on this one. I was going to leave the craft color as the photo mat, but to me it looked a little blah. Those were two, two easy pages. It's actually page one, but it's um, front and back. So let me lay that to side. We'll go to page two. <clears throat> Makes it go a little bit faster if I have it already cut out. Okay, this is the front side. I keep seeing these little nubs here. And when I cut that, there, I got it that time. Need a little bit more ink in here too. Okay. little envelopes. I just cut the flap off of it. And I punched my little notch in it. These are just the little pre-made envelopes that you can buy in most any craft supply store. That's not quite straight. This glue sets up so fast. something under it, like a foam mat or what have you. <coughs> Looks pretty good to me. And then this is a little, supposed to be a card to go in the envelope, but I just put a few, um, doodling lines for, um, journaling and the place photo stamp here and then I'm going to leave the back side blank and I just cut little pieces from my scraps to kind of decorate up the front and when I get done with this I'll go through what I've got left and see if I've got like these little bows and butterflies I'll use them somewhere 
as an extra little embellishment. See if I can glue it shut. I didn't. It's just, it's kind of thin paper. It's hard to get a hold of. Almost have to beat it with your nail. And that goes right in there. So on the back side of, goodness, it keeps clinging to me. On the back side, we have a double mat. And I'm going to put one of the, uh, let me do this piece first. One of the, uh, Oh, I like that side too. I think the other one looks better with this. I love that weathered wood, but I've got a lot of it on the outside of the box. It's a good thing I laid my pieces aside from the cover before I start cutting this or I wouldn't have anything left for the cover. one of these cut aparts. I don't want that one, it's too much purple. What about this one? It's kind of big though. I'll think about it. I can always come back to it. Oh, I had this one. Uh -oh. I had this one laid out there. I like that. Let me eat that edge up. This is the one with the uh, five by three and the five by four and a half. So we need to burnish those first. Now I didn't include all of these measurements on the cut sheet simply because I don't know what size box you're going to be using. So these measurements may not apply to what, you're, what you have at all. I'm going to put it right along the bottom. And this one goes at the top. Okay, now I need 
seems to line up with this one. down on the inside to cover those joints there and those seams. I'll tell you sometimes I think I just forgot areas to ink. Either that or I just didn't put enough on it. The rest of it looks okay.
these. And I'm not sure I want to use them. So I'm going to move on to the back side. This was to go with that. And I'm going to, oh, that's upside down. We don't want the words to be upside down. This one goes here. Put this in the center. And this one goes here. Page three already. It really doesn't take very long to put it together. Most of your time is spent cutting and inking, mostly cutting and getting your layout like you want it. There's that piece. And I like to put them in pieces down first because if I need to alter anything it's easier to cut down the big piece than it is these little slivers to get them in your cutter and get them to lay still to you get them cut like you want them a little bit higher on that It's also pretty, it's just hard to choose. This one is on this lace. I have cut it with my craft knife and just inked along the top and bottom edge. So when I glue it down, then I'll have a tuck spot to put some photo mats and things in. So I'm ready to put this one down. But you just want a little bit along the bottom here to secure it, but you don't want to glue the whole bottom down. You lose your pocket.
I've got a pocket in here where I can put things. I'll just stick that in there for now. On the back side of four. We have another one of those pockets. <coughs> so the first thing I want to do is glue this to the base. Okay, we are on the front side of page four, and this is going to go, or the back side, sorry. Let's see if I want it to go this way. There's another piece somewhere. These go here. Here's my little strips. Oh. I know how it goes. This and then this. We have to stop and rethink what I what I did to start with sometimes. Or should I do it this way? Let me see which way I like it best. that way best. Okay, so let's glue these down. Did I ink it? Yes. I have to double check myself and make sure what I did. Make sure I don't miss a step. Get out of the way. The paper's not cooperating. There's that one. I just happen to have some colors in my stash, some solid colors that would work with this. Kind of help stretch it out. If it wasn't for that, I'd have never made it with 10 sheets, I don't think. strip. <coughs> and this one will go right here. And that's just a little bit too low. Let me take a snip off of it. Now a little bit more glue. It don't take long. But I had everything cut okay, but... Sometimes when you go to glue it down, it's not exactly what you thought you had.
week. Oh.